I want to start this lesson here on page two of your notes and fill in what the actual coordinates are of the unit circle. So you can kind of see how, how they relate actually to quadrant one does to two, three, and four. So the very first coordinate that we have right here is just the typical coordinate one, zero. Up here at the top is just zero, one. Then we have negative one, zero and zero negative one. Those are just the typical graphs. You know, you're going over one on the x-axis, down one, up one, and left one. Okay. From there, we have from the unit or from the basic first quadrant, we know that this is the square root of three over two and one half. This is the square root of two over two, the square root of two over two. And then we have one half the square root of three over two. Okay, so that's what we know. And so how these relate, so you kind of draw yourself a kind of a picture that this is the, let's like, let me start with the square root of three over two, one half. You can almost draw yourself a nice little rectangle if you really, really wanted to. And where are these four corners of the rectangle match up, you actually have all the same coordinates. So square root of three over two, one half. Over here, square root of three over two, one half. And up there, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. The only difference is, is you just got to go in and put your signs in. Back here in quadrant 2, my x values are negative. In quadrant 3, they're both negative. And then in quadrant 4, x's are positive and y's are negative. Okay? So if we kind of do that whole drawing the square thing with the middle, you've got basically those two being connected with that with there and then back around. So basically all the middle ones are always the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, within quadrant 4 the y being negative, in quadrant 3 both the x's and y's being negative, and then in quadrant 2 just the x's being negative. Okay, and last but not least we just got the last one to draw in here. And here's your last rectangle connecting more of it's more of a narrow vertical rectangle, but it's always going to be the one half square root of three over two. And all it does is to differ by is your signs, depending on which quadrant you're in. And so finishing this up. Here's a unit circle, which by the time you just know quadrant one, you really know all the other quadrants. All they do is just differ by signs. That's everything. All right, so what we want to do from here now, oh, let me make a point before we go on. Remember, what this is, what this is showing you right here is if I take any ray, if I take any basically arm length, and I start rotating around the circle, what you have just found are the coordinates that you're going to land at on the circle. Okay, so as I rotate throughout angles, this is where you're landing. These are position values. Um, when we get into base, into our engineering concepts, what we're talking about here is if, if you're working with a robot and you have to program it, and you need to say, hey, I want to move this arm, and I need to move my, my robot's arm from starting position to, let's say, this other position, what you're going to basically tell it is, I want to start at the coordinate 1, 0, and I want to rotate up to the coordinate one half square root of three over two. It's all about positions. This is how far you're rotating along the circle. Okay. Now these next two circles that we have drawn here, those are all okay. As I rotate to this position, what angle have I rotated through? Did I rotate through 180 degrees? Did I rotate through just a negative 20 degrees? How? What size angle have I rotated through to get to land on that spot on the circle? Okay. And Let's fill in, first of all, this first one we want to do is fill it in with just degrees. So if you're, if you're right here on the x-axis, you're at zero degrees. From there, we want to keep kind of rotating around. We know up there at the top, some common points, is 90 degrees because right angle. So 90, 180, 270, and then a full circle is also 360 degrees. Okay, from there, Looks like I've actually I've missed a, I've missed two dots on here. Y'all might draw a dot there in the middle and a dot there in the middle as well. But from there, one of the easiest things I can say is to divide each of these into like what's half of 90 is 45. So right there 
is 45 degrees. So if I start at 0 and I add 45, I've gotten to the middle. Add 45, you get to 90. So 90 plus 45 is 135 degrees. And 135 plus 45 is 180. 180 plus 45 is 225 degrees. Plus 45 more is 270. And 270 plus 45 is 315 degrees. 315 and 45 is 360, okay? So first of all, what I did is I did the 90, 180, 270, and 360, and then I divided the 90 in half to 45, okay? Last thing you want to do is look at this and go, okay, the other dots, the other black dots that we see on here is, looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, like almost like six equal pieces around, and that's by 30s, okay? So if I start at 0 and I add on 30 to get to this dot, I'm right here. And 30 plus 30 is 60. 60 plus 30 is 90. We already have that there. So 90 plus 30 is 120. Plus 30 is 150. And plus 30 is 180. 180 plus 30 is 210. Plus 30 is 240. Then 270. Then 300, 330, and 360. So if you kind of want to maybe do these by steps, what you could do is take each hemisphere. So the first thing you want to maybe do is take 180 degrees and divide it by 2. And that got you the 90, the 90, 18, 270, and 360. The second step is you can take 180 degrees and divide it by 4. And then lastly, 180 degrees divided by 6, and that's how you're going to fill in all the dots, okay? When you divide by 2, you're dividing this 180 into two equal pieces. That's why you're going to put it up at 90. When you divide 180 by 4, you're going to divide that whole top hemisphere into four equal parts. That's why they're going into the middles here. And then by 6, that's why we're kind of looking at the six equal pieces all the way around, okay? So let's do the same thing with radians. I want to start just like what I did. Half of a circle, which now in this case is pi, I want to divide it by 2. So that gets you basically pi over 2, or by halves. And the second thing I'm going to do is take my pi, which is half my hemisphere, and divide it by force. And then I'm going to take my pi and divide it by 6. Okay. So if this is 0 pi, then if I divide it, in, and this over here is pi, and up here at the top has to be half a pi. So 0, 1 half pi plus a half is 1. And 1 plus a half is 3 halves. And 3 halves plus 1 half is 4 halves, which is 2 pi, reducing it. Okay, so 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, and 4 halves. Let's divide by 4s now. So this is 1 fourth. This is 2 fourths, which reduces to a half. This is 3 fourths. 4 fourths, which is 1. 5 fourths. 6 fourths, reduced. 7 fourths. And then 8 fourths, and you're right back around. Okay? And the last thing we want to do is pi over 6. So here's 1 sixth. Here is 2 sixths which actually is pi over 3. So 1, 6, 2, 6, 3 over 6, which reduces, 4 over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. Here's 5 pi over 6, and then 6 pi over 6, which is 1. 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, which goes to 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6, which reduces to there. 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6, and then 12 pi over 6, which is right there. Okay? So let me, of the pi over 6, let's highlight them. So it's here's 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
and 12 pi over 6. And so there's all your pi over 6s. The same rules apply. Just take your hemisphere, first divide it in half and place them all around, then divide it in quarters, and then divide it into 6, and you got your full unit circle. Okay, so moving down to example 1, what we want to do is find the ordered pair associated with t equals 21 pi over 4. And then we're going to find sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant Okay, of that angle. All right, first of all, we need to graph this because what we have, what this is right here is actually an angle. Okay, so after I've taken that ray, starting on the positive x-axis and rotating it around, which is what we did in the lesson right before this, we want to figure out where we land on that unit circle. Okay, so it's divided by, the bottom number says force, so I'm going to be, do each hemisphere into force. So there's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3, 4 fourths, 5, 6, 7, 8 fourths, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, right there. 21 fourths, 21 pi over 4. And if I wanted to, we know all about coterminal angles, so I could have taken I want to shrink this down a little bit more. I can say 21 pi over 4 and subtract off 2 pi. Or let's say 21 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. And so 21 minus 8 would give me, what, 13? Pi over 4. And so we could have shrunken that down even a little bit more. Subtract off again 8 pi over 4. And that would have left me with 5 pi over 4. So let's see. If I started here at the positive x-axis and went around to 5 pi over 4, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it will land me in the exact same spot. So if you don't want to count off 21, you can use all your rules of coterminal angles, shrink it down a little bit, and then all you had to do in that case was graph 5 pi over 4. Okay? So let me erase this just for a second. And let's talk about what we're going to do next, is we want to figure out now the coordinate there. Okay, we, anytime, here's a good key to kind of keep in mind. Anytime you're at a pi over 4, your coordinate always is going to be the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2. And since we're in quadrant 3, that just means that they're both negative for sure. Okay, and if nothing else, you can go back up to that circle that we drew just a second ago and double check. That right here in the middle of quadrant 3 that you have a coordinate of negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. So when I rotate my ray, or when I rotate this arm, by an angle of 21 and pi over 4, where I have landed on the circle, is at this coordinate right here. Now the sine of that angle is always the y value there. Well, the y value there is the negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine says, what's the x value in that coordinate? which is also the negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent says, I want the ratio. I want that y value, and I want to divide it by the x value, which in that case is positive 1. Okay? The Let's see, let's go backwards. So cotangent is just the reciprocal of my tangent, or it's the x divided by the y, which is still going to be 1. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine value. So it's going to be negative 2 over the square root of 2. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of my sine value. So it's the negative 2 over the square root of 2. And yes, y'all are probably right. We don't want to leave radicals down there in the denominator. So if we want to, we can multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2 over 2. And let's come up here. And that will leave it as negative 2 square roots of 2 over 2. And that's what both cosecant and secant will equal. Okay?